Hi, we're here today in California with the yes. amazing Brett Michaels. Is an e hot? Rocking it, rocking it. it. <laughs> and um, I just want to ask you a few questions. Absolutely. Um, just for um, the Calgarians up north in Canada. We love the Calgarians. Yes. By the way, I got to tell you, Sue, for the Stampede, I have. They've honored me with the official cowboy hat from the Stampede. Oh, you have that a Stetson. Big, I have a Stetson. Oh, I have an official. Stetson. Yep, an official hat. I've been honored very with. So good. thank you very much. All right, go You're ahead. Welcome. So I guess for me, I have um, a very good friend up in yes. Calgary. Um, her daughter was diagnosed at the age of, I think it was two, gotcha. with type one diabetes. Right. Now I know they struggle with this all the time. On top of that, she's um, allergic to peanuts and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Which is very yeah. tough. Yeah, no, I know you've been struggling this for with this for a long time. Absolutely. What advice could you give um, to the parents of, of this little girl and you know things right. to watch out for? And... A couple things that I would say right off the bat. The first thing I would tell them is, you know, the parents have to accept and the and the child has to accept that they're diabetic. I mean, my parents, you know, the one thing that happened, I got it when I was six, and oh. and there's no doubt it's horrific. It hits you family isn't ready for it and that's what I do with my Life Rocks Foundation. I go to all these families and I talk to them, set kids to camp. Once you accept the fact that this is the card you've been dealt, right? You can't you can't live in denial because that's when it gets deadly. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And once they accept that no one brought this on, don't blame yourself for it. There's no let all that go. Because so many parents are like, did I do this? Did you do this? What did we do that caused this? It's just it's it's genetics, it's a gene, it's whatever happened with that cell that caused this diabetes is now you have it. So once you accept being diabetic, after that now it's as much physical as it is. It's as much physical and mental as a combination of, of mentally for me, accepting it, staying in the battle, watching my blood test, my blood sugars non-stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Keeping control of your blood sugar and it's not very painful. And back in the day it was a little yeah. more painful when I first got it. Yeah. As long as the blood sugar tests were a little more painful, now they've really got it down good. And uh, we do we work really hard now to hopefully eventually have a needle free system, you know, which will be huge. But the, the bottom line is is the parents get involved the child make sure that all the friends know that they're diabetic, look for the signs of a low blood sugar, look for the signs of high blood sugar, and, and really after that, eating good, keeping an eye on your diet. And I think for me, being a diabetic in some ways was a blessing. It, although it forced me to grow up a little earlier than I wanted to, yeah. in some strange ways it also helped me to get grab control of my life and go out there and say, okay, i got to be responsible and, and take control of myself. And be healthy, and I, I know you're um, a big advocate of that. I Absolutely. I saw a picture earlier on Facebook of you doing your thing outside the, <laughs> the bus. Yeah, yeah, working out. I was laughing so hard we were throwing football, and I was doing the yeah. Heisman. I was yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, yeah. Hey, but it's, uh, but yeah. even up when I'm up in Canada, when I'm anywhere, on, on the tour bus, right, I bring along, I have the, the, the bike back there, I pedal, yeah. you do stuff. Awesome. And listen, I, I want people to understand, I'm one of those guys that has fun and gets it done. So that doesn't mean your whole life has to be. Don't focus it around diabetes. Don't stress about it. Just keep. Just go have a great time. Go out and camp. Whatever you like to do. I ride dirt bikes. I play football. I do all the stuff that I want to do. I just have to work a little harder to keep the blood sugars in control. Yeah, that that's amazing. You hear that, Ray Ray? I love you. It's for you. Ray Ray. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> so that brings me to the next point you're talking about all the, the extra activities that you do like right. regarding the, the dirt bird biking which is awesome yes yeah. scars well, to prove I did yeah, that yeah, I years see. Ago. <laughs> yeah absolutely that's awesome I know. That, that was yeah that's another story we yeah, have we'll time get, for that we'll get into that one yeah, another yeah. time that's a whole other interview yeah it is so how do you I really have to know how do you squeeze in doing so many different um, casinos and tours and all these right. speaking and filming right the right. new apprentice? Yes. Right. Did yes. Apprentice. Yes. Apprentice was crazy. First you time I went. Family. Let me say this. You know, the, the most important thing is me being a great dad. That's number okay. one, right? You want to go out there. I got two beautiful daughters, 12 yep. and 7, Rain in Georgia, trying to work that out and, and make that an amazing piece of it. And I've been blessed because Christy, their mom, is such an amazing human being. And, and I, I was very fortunate that both of us are great friends and, yeah. and have, been, had a, 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 have had a uh, had a great life together and worked stuff out through thick and thin or ups and downs. Yeah. We that's number one. Number two, touring. Number one, I'm passionate. I love to do it. So Still. that's the number one. I mean, I get out there, I'm like, I get jacked up. I love. I feel blessed being able to play music and being blessed. You want to go out and do that stuff. And and then here's the other thing. 
is finding a harmony on the road, you know, finding the right people to be out there on the road with, yeah. knowing each other, you know, not being around each other, no one to no one to hang out, no one to get away from each other. And for me, I I combine filming all the shows. Uh, now I've got a brand new show called Rock My RV on the Travel Channel airs May 26th. Um, I shot some great new stuff with Celebrity Apprentice. I won it the first time, which was really tough. I was the only one crazy enough as a winner to go back and do it again, right? And uh, and that was nuts of me to do. And Trump goes, you know, I want you on this side of the table, and they're all coming after you. You got to see it. It's crazy. Yeah, oh, I can't they wait. Come, they're like, it's like sharks, and I'm in the tank. I mean, it's. I mean, they're coming. I'm not even in the tank. I'm just out in the ocean. And they. Uh, and it was. But it was a lot of fun, and I, I love it. And and then mixing that with all the solo stuff that we do, and the poison tours of doing the arenas, and then and then myself coming out solo. Tons of charity work. Just did one the other day. All that stuff combined, I say simply this: find. You got to find a way, and that's how I do it. And some days, no doubt, it gets rough. There's days that you're like, "Oh, I don't feel my best," and then I just have to figure out how to readjust that schedule and make it work. Yeah, you know, even with all your passion and energy, I always wonder. Like, you just you sing so much. How do your vocal cords handle that? I'm not really sure. I'm going to say this: I just got done. I warm up my throat before every show. I got this thing. I'm just. I'm going to give you a hard sell. If you're going to sing even drunken karaoke, go to brettmichaels.com and buy the vocalizer. It, will, it says for karaoke, drunken karaoke, yeah. or if you want to be a superstar, it doesn't matter. It does, it. When you go into the studio, but I use it every day. It's about a half hour warm up. It goes by really quick. Your vocal cords are warmed up. And, uh, and then when you go out there and do that, it's like warming up. If you're going to work out, mm -hmm. you're not going to walk in there and just pick up the heaviest weight and just start jerking it around. Mm -hmm. You warm up to it, and then boom, it's the same thing. The, the muscles, it's the same with the vocal cords. Yeah. They're just the muscle that needs warmed up. Yeah, Although I've had a couple of drunken karaoke nights where I didn't warm up. <laughs> not my best thing. He's still good, though. He's still, he's still good. Well, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. You're I appreciate the time and squeezing us in, and we're really looking forward to the great show tonight. It's, it's going to be an amazing awesome. show. The energy and the fun, playing all the hits, and then uh, and then coming up to see you real soon in Calgary. We're going to be up there. And uh, Calgarians? Calgarians, Oh, uh, yes. Calgarians rock. <laughs> all yes. right. Give me a big hug. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Awesome interview. Okay, we're cutting.